Hi, everyone. It is February 22nd, 2021. I want to thank my subscriber, Jay Breezes, for um, mentioning this video that is here on Library TV, Texas Power Outage. If anybody knows this woman, would you please leave in the comments section her channel? Uh, if she's on YouTube, this is Library TV, but I'm noticing that an awful lot of people have reposted her video, so I don't know if this is the original uh, channel of the original woman who is in this video, Truth Science. Short video, listen, and I like her delivery. Millions of Texans now find themselves fighting for their survival after a winter storm knocked out their power. People have resorted to burning their own furniture in order to keep warm. Entire families have perished from carbon monoxide poisoning from running their cars indoors. Frozen pipes have burst, completely flooding businesses and homes. And grocery store shelves are empty as people find themselves waiting in mile-long lines for food. But what level of trust do I have in the narrative that this was a freak event created by nature? About as much trust as I have in circle back Saki to answer a direct question. This is the work of geoengineering and a strategic attack on the power grid. Weather modification is nothing new, nor is it classified information. And China's been boasting about its plan to expand its weather modification program through all of 2020. I find it pretty hard to understand how there can be people out there who believe Nixon called the moon from a landline, but can't quite wrap their head around the fact that very powerful people might be weaponizing our weather. Does anybody find it odd that Texas, the energy capital of the world, is experiencing a power failure less than one month after Biden suspended Trump's executive order to keep foreign entities out of their power grid? Why did he do that, especially related to something so critical to our national security as the power grid? I'll have to. I think the president's view on, on our relationship with China, I, I uh, tried to do my best to convey to all of you. I'll have to check on that specific piece and we'll, we'll circle back with you directly. What's even more sketchy is that ERCOT, the agency that manages the power grid, gave assurance one week before the storm that they were completely ready to weather the elements. So why intentionally create these storms and leave millions of Texans without power? Well, I can think of more than a few reasons. First of all, this could completely cripple America's oil hub at a time when governments around the world are pushing their bullshit global warming narrative. It could kickstart Bill Gates' wet dream of shorting the food supply and forcing the global population onto a diet of crushed cockroach burgers and vaccine impregnated tomatoes. It could force landowners to flee into smart cities under the guise of sustainable development. And of course, it creates the overall goal of reducing the human population to more controllable levels. Our friends at the Institute for Innovation and Public Purpose are already floating the idea that climate lockdowns will become the new normal. Under a climate lockdown, governments would limit private vehicle use, ban consumption of red meat, and impose extreme energy saving measures while fossil fuel companies would have to stop drilling. To avoid such a scenario, we must overhaul our economic structures and do capitalism differently. I suggest you prepare yourselves because this is not the last we're going to see of events like this. This is coming for all of us. I'll have to just circle back with you. We can circle back. I'm, I'm happy to circle back with you. I can circle back. Uh, I will have to circle back on that one. That's an excellent question. Oh, such an important question. Uh, we will circle back with you and we'll, we'll circle back with you. It's an interesting question, but uh, we'll, we'll circle back. I'm happy to circle back, but I'll have to circle back with you on it. It's a good question, but we'll circle back with you on this today. We will certainly circle back with you more directly. Uh, I hate to disappoint you, but I will have to circle back. Circle back, circle back, circle back. All right. Who is she? I like her. Power outages. She's absolutely right. Prepare, because we are going to be living through some, well, longer outages, more frequent outages, and, well, this is... This is... Venezuela. Americans, you are now Venezuelan. How do you like it? You know, these power outages. Now, this power outage map, uh, I think it just gives uh, 10,000 or over 
those experiencing power outages because there are power outages in Eureka. Now, here it says 68 customers affected. Well, for those 68, that's not fun. But there are power outages all over our country. And, yeah, it's hard to live through them when you're so used to just flipping that switch and getting that electricity going, getting that heat going, getting the air conditioning going. Oh, wait until summertime. So I just, uh, I want to post this video. Um, you know, you guys, the, the video that I just posted before this on the Pineapple Express it's coming to, once again, Oregon, Washington. You are still experiencing power outages a whole lot in Oregon. Well, yeah. Um, just for those, you know, I feel like I'm posting on information that everybody knows, that it's just basic common sense. You know, when I was in South Carolina... I lived through, in the last apartment complex I was living in, three or four power outages. The longest outage was, I think, 16 or maybe 18 hours. Even that short period of time was very difficult. And there was so much about, you know, living... Um, during a power outage, having lights, having candles, having a way to heat, you know, um, even just a room that I, I had never, it was not on my radar. Well, now we need to put it on our radar, even if you haven't experienced any power outage. Guarantee you will be experiencing it. So when things are just not on your radar, when you have lived a certain way and, you know, you don't have any, um, well, there's no real reference point for what we're living today. So that's why I'm posting this, you know, because there was an awful lot I didn't know even a short while ago. So there are these heaters Mr. Heater, there's Mr. Heater Buddy that are actually quite good <laughs> as I'm doing this. I had one. I had the propane tanks. I had um, this great lead light that I was really impressed with, um, and none of it was very expensive. Now, the Buddy Heater... I don't even think I got one for this price. So, you know, on these portable heaters, gas heaters, propane heaters, um, they range in price. So depending on your budget, uh, there are some that you can pick up that are not even as expensive as this one, $119. You can get them at Walmart uh, and other places. Um, but, you know, they're calling for this Pineapple Express and the wind gust and everything for this weekend. So you might want to spend some time tomorrow going out, doing some shopping, getting prepared. And if you don't need it, good. But you have it for the next time. Another manufactured storm comes around your way. So, um, yeah, you can take a look, and they require these um, uh, butane, or I'm sorry, propane, and they're not very expensive. 16 ounces, $8.39, well worth having these stored in your home for when that time comes and you need it. Also, 
I got one of these lamps. Yeah, man, it pisses me off because I had to leave so much behind. But it looked similar to this. Now, I was living in a studio apartment, so I didn't need much, but $6.69. Okay, they put out an awful lot of light. They're not that expensive. Of course, you can get the more expensive ones, but um, well worth having this sitting in your home for when you are ready to use them. Okay. Uh, stove. Okay. Uh, there are plenty of like camping stoves that you can get. You can get one that's just a grill. You could get one that takes propane. You can get these Stealth Angel steel, uh, stainless steel square wood burning stoves. And I actually went to this Stealth. Stealth Angel, this wood burning stove. You get a little pot and, you know, twigs outside so you can heat up some food for yourself. Um, the, uh, there's a whole range of them. And yeah, at Walmart, you can buy, you know, these Coleman's or um, nothing fancy, just a grill that really is not expensive at all. And there are even less expensive methods you know, for cooking, which I'll get into. But all of this now, I think everybody should have on hand. Have on hand. Okay. Also, there are a lot of YouTube videos. And... You can just put in the search bar um, uh, how to stay warm during a power outage. This is the toilet paper heater. No joke. And all you have to do is buy uh, an empty paint can with a lid at a local hardware store. I'm sure a whole lot of people have a lot of toilet paper ever since COVID hit the market. Well, a roll of toilet paper and some um, alcohol, and uh, I'll just play a few minutes of this. This will heat up. Uh, this will give you some heat during a power outage. And then we're going to come back and do the burn time test. All right, so to make these nifty little heaters, we need our one quart empty paint cans, a roll of toilet paper, some isopropyl alcohol, and then an ignition source. And I like to keep a quarter taped to the top just because the lid of the paint can can be pretty difficult to get off if you don't have anything around to get under there. And it's a pretty easy, cheap way to make sure that you can get this lid on and off. But the basic gist is that we're going to get this toilet paper inside there. Now you're thinking like, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to remove the cardboard roll. Just put your finger in there and squeeze it out. And then we're going to crumple this up. And you're basically just going to work this in there. But with some finagling, you should be able to persuade this toilet paper roll to get all the way in there. I'm just gonna have to go around and around and around to get it over that lip. Under that lip, rather. There we go. And then it's gonna start puffing back out. And now we've got our dry toilet paper roll inside the container. Now the reason I like using these cork containers versus something else is that they have a sealable lid. So one, any of the isopropyl alcohol is not going to leak out 
wherever you put these. They don't always have to stay upright, although that's best. Um, and secondly, if you only want to use the heater for 15, 20 minutes, and then that's going to be it. These are really nice because they're airtight. You, you set this lid over that, it's going to cut the oxygen off inside and smother the fire. So then they can be reused too. But then we're just going to take our isopropyl alcohol and put it in there, a little bit at a time. Imagine about 75% of this bottle will fit. Then you're just going to put your matches or lighter in a watertight container. Add your quarter to the top so you can open the lid. And that is a complete emergency heater. Now let's go test and see how long these run. All right. So that's how you put these little heaters together. In a nice tight little bundle. Um, fits easily in the trunk of your car. But now we're going to open up and we're going to light them. We're going to burn them. See how much heat they produce. How much heat goes to the below the heaters and if that's an issue. Um, and then we're going to make some with known percentages of alcohol and see if that makes a difference as well. So let's open these up. Um, again, take your quarter and you just pop open the, the paint can. These have not been opened for over five years. All right. So we are definitely still wet. You know, over time, this is going to eat away at the can. So, but that's five years. And this is the amount of corrosion that was in there. So definitely something to be aware of that it will corrode over time. However, not something that I would say, you know, for less than $5 for the can that I would not do these once every five years to have that emergency backup source. Now we're just gonna take our matches and, and see how this goes. We are immediately lit. Nice. So after five years, it definitely still works. Alright, so we're an hour and 15 minutes and the bottoms of these are still cool to the touch. They are definitely going strong. There's just slight singeing on the top. And as you can see, even with wind, they are staying lit. It's not about until not about there where it starts to get uncomfortably hot to touch. And there's definitely no no heat transferred to the ground at this point. All right, so we're at about two hours and 20 minutes. This one has gone out. It's used up all of the fuel that was down in there. Feeling down in this toilet paper, it's moist, but it's not, it's not wet. And so I imagine just they couldn't wick any more up to the top, but it started to burn the, uh, the toilet paper pretty, pretty well through. And I imagine that one's not far behind it. So it seems to be about two hours, two and a half hours for the can. Now, <clears throat> others <clears throat> who have made them fresh, they last a lot longer. These are the cans that he produced five years ago that give two and a half hours. So if you did it fresh, you would have a lot longer. And here's a woman who, oh, sorry, this is... Uh, the six life-saving tips to keep warm during a winter power outage. And uh, this is Mr. Heater, the buddy heater with the propane. Um, but they're also, this video, they talk about duct taping, or n not with duct tape, actually, but um, come on. With uh, painter's tape. Blues. Hmm. And plastic over the windows. And all of this is not very expensive. You can have it on hand so that you seal around your door and around your windows to keep the cold air from coming in. They also, you know, if you have kids or um, if you live with other people, having a tent where you can all get in it and the body heat 
from all of you begins to, well, heat up the tent and it'll keep you warmer than just being in an open room. Um, but the Crisco, this woman with the um, clay pots used Crisco in a can in or a jar um, that she, you know, just one of these, um, what is it, a ball jar with a lid. You can watch this. You put the Crisco in here. You put it underneath the uh, clay pot. You uh, either a quarter or no matter, I, I don't know how big the hole is, but you place either tin foil over the hole. Then that clay pot will begin to emit heat into the room. So you get a couple of these and you can have some heat. This is the clay pots. This man has this on tiles with tea lights. And I'll show you what he has done with just, uh, you go to the dollar store, you can pick up a bag of these tea lights, like 20 for a dollar or even 40 for a dollar. I don't know. Uh, but they're, you get a lot of them for $1. And the clay pots are not that expensive. So, you know, um, you don't need tiles. You don't have to run out and buy tiles. But you, you have something underneath it that is non-flammable. Uh, at the dollar store, you can pick up a big tin, um, you know, those aluminum... Uh, um, pans, which, you know, for a dollar, I think you get two. So you could just put it on that. Tea lights on the bottom and the clay pot. You put here, he, he just had a metal doorknob that he put in it that fit perfectly. And then another pot, a bigger pot, over that. And that gives you hours of heat. So you have a couple of these. And based on all of the videos that I've seen, people swear by this. A very cheap heat source. So, um, this video, though, the... Uh, this father and son going through all the ways in which, you know, you can stay warm. So you put a tent inside. You all just get inside that tent with sleeping bags or comforters or blankets. Of course, dress warmly. Um, there are ways to do this. And the hand warmers, the foot warmers, which are not that expensive, all of this you can have on hand for when you need it. Tea lights in a can just to warm up your hands. Here's a, a grill, and they're actually cooking on a candle stove. So... 121 tea lights, three to six hours burn time. Yes, you can. They also have, you know, ways in which you can, uh, very cheap ways in which you can just set up, you know, this metal little box with, you know, just a grill on it with these... Um, burners. Okay, so rocket stoves. 
And I'll link below to all of this, so all you have to do is click on the link. But there are plenty of um, products that you can buy to ensure that you don't you know, die of hypothermia. Last I heard, it was over 60 people died in Texas alone. So here is a rather complicated uh, do-it-your-own brick rock stove, but I came across another video, and very simple, very simple indeed. Uh, you know, this is all you do is get the cinder blocks, and you can watch him. These are the materials. So he just got, I don't want to play this video because I, I'm afraid of getting copyright strikes. Okay. So you just put one cinder block down and then create an H block. If you can't buy an H block, then you can get these slabs of cinder block, one brick, you put the brick in the middle and then have another slab, that's your H block, and then just put the other cinder block up against it, and another cinder block on top. And you have a stove. You have a stove. So he puts leaves in and twigs in. You can put it from the top. You can put it from the side. And voila, you have a stove. And as it continued to burn, and he put, you know, thicker uh, twigs in there, he got a nice burning stove. And then you just get a grill to put on top of it, which he has right here. So you can buy a stove, you can make a stove, sleeping bags, really important because they, well, sleeping bags are uh, for minus 35 degrees and zipping that up, it keeps the body heat in. Here's your Stealth Angels stainless steel, stainless steel, sorry, square wood burning stove if you don't want to do the cinder blocks. Um, portable water filters that they have. You got to get water. Get that water so that it's, you know, it's there for you when you need it. So there's a lot of different, you know, water filters. I'm not saying that they're perfect. And, and please don't think that I am sponsoring any of these products. I'm not. I don't get any, any um, money from any of this. As, as you can see, I'm showing you an awful lot of different kinds. And, you know, you would have to also maybe do a little bit of research on these um, to find out which ones are the best. Here you got a $369 one, but there are $64 ones, $24.95. Um, and all of you who are watching this, please leave comments uh, if you know of any other methods um, for anything. Now, I had one of these when I was living in my car. It is an AC adapter. You put it into your cigarette um, uh, well, it's not really a cigarette lighter, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So if you need to um, 
run any kind of electrical, small appliances, or even really big appliances, uh, this one, well, this one will run a vacuum, uh, a whole lot of appliances from your car. Um, so you can check these out. This is the editor's pick. There are cheaper ones, of course, but they're not that expensive. It's good to have on hand just in case you need to plug something in. Let's say that you don't want to do, you know, uh, making coffee on a, you know, a stove. You, you just want to, you know, have your coffee maker. If you don't have any power in your home, you want to bring your coffee maker outside. You can make your coffee in your car. So this is also just, it's good to have on hand. And of course, the foot warmers and the hand warmers. And hell, you could get an electric heated foot warmer and have the AC adapter and at least warm up your feet in your car. Make sure you have gas. Um, also, you know, I was thinking about this. Seeds of change. Now, this is rice, or this is this happens to be quinoa and brown rice with garlic. This is very easy. You put it in a pot. You open the pack. You put it in a pot. You put a tablespoon of water. You heat it up. Voila. You have ready-made rice very quickly for you to eat doesn't take much to heat it up at all. You just put it on, you know, a camping stove, and you got it. You got a can of beans, you throw in a can of beans. Get, um, you could get black beans, whatever beans you want, but, you know, you could get soups. Amy's black bean soup and throw it in this rice, and then you have a meal. Well, it's actually good for two, just one packet. And they actually sell these at Walmart. They're very cheap, and they store forever. So you can have this on hand, cans of black beans or Amy's black bean soup. Uh, you just throw it in to the rice, and you have a very quick meal that doesn't require any cooking, no stove, you know, you, you, no oven or whatever. Um, it's, it's a good source of nutritional food that you can just store forever. So the, the other things are just to have peanut butter or n any nut butter that you like on hand. You know, butter and yogurt can... Uh, it doesn't spoil, so it can be outside of a refrigerator. You can get fig bars, um, which are filling and uh, far better for you than a whole lot of junk. Have nuts and dried fruit available. You can get boxed almond or coconut milk, and they come... Some of this can come in those small boxes, so, you know, milk will spoil, but those kinds of milks in the boxes won't. So, anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to be living through this quite a lot, and it is very important to have, you know, food and water, gas in your car, and ways to stay warm, of course, um, things that you can cook with easily, and a light that you can see, 
uh, what you're doing. So I'll link below to everything. Anybody has any other ideas, please leave it down in the comment section. And boy, do I hope that no one has to live through a power outage. I sure hope that you guys in Oregon who have lived through your power outages, some of my subscribers going on, well, one is still going on, um, I think eight days. Another one went through eight days. That's a long time, especially when it's cold. No, you're not going to have that Arctic blast that Texas had, but it's still going to be cold. So stay as safe as you can. Hope you don't have to live through any of this, but if you do, I sure hope that you have what you need on hand. You know, these toilet paper things, uh, the um, quart can, toilet paper, and the alcohol. You can have this made up, ready to go, if you need it. Alrighty. Take care, guys.